up, guys? Uh, we're live today. Uh, this is not Art Talk. This is hanging out with Spike Barriston today, which is uh, a treat. And uh, we're going to go over Spike's new coloring book, which you guys know, very familiar with. What's up? I'm good. <laughs> this is fun, Fire. As you can see, he's incredibly excited. I'm no, very excited. Is, I is. am because there's it's quiet here today. Yeah. It's a nice yeah. quiet Thursday. It's not our crazy car show on Sunday and uh, it's always good to see you. The last, Cheers. last one was, coffee. was a bit nuts. Uh, this is Spike excited and this is Spike not excited. <laughs> so this is what, what we get. Which you is... could have seen my morning. <laughs> exactly. But I am happy to be here. Uh, but what we uh, uh, what we want to do is, is you got, let, a lot of you guys have bought the book already and I think it came out great. Yeah, there. you did a great job yeah. on it. But uh, it's a Except good subject. Except this piece right there, the, yeah. uh, the Hank Hill we, spike. We fixed the eyes, though. <laughs> the eyes look good now. But but having worked in comedy, mm -hmm. look at Larry just... Yeah. Look at my... Mm, yeah. So it, it looks like twin to me. Yeah. It looks pretty much... Hank extreme. Hill. Yeah. yeah. Hank Hill is what I keep getting. <laughs> but I, it's funny, Lucky and I you. enjoyed it could that. Be, it could be something else. Look, I'm not an attractive man. And, and that's why I hide under hats and glasses. Uh, interesting, interesting. So, uh, as <laughs> as a side note, we are doing a book signing on the yes. 26th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Saturday. At the Mount Malibu Pier, and uh, uh, Spike's going to be bringing this car right here. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring that's my German Volkswagen. The real uh, thing. You think field. it's going to make it there? Yeah, yeah. It, it runs really well. Mm -hmm. that, that car, uh, you know, Volkswagens. That's what I like about. Them. That's what I like about Porsches. They run really well. They, they do. They tend not to break down. Yeah. Unlike uh, English cars and mm. a few other things that we uh, discussed. Absolutely. Yeah. Some of them are in that book. They are. They are. <laughs> so not the broken down ones. But um, I don't think I've ever drawn so many Porsches in my entire life because I did the Porsche book, then yours, and right. then, of course, Magnus's. And yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, I can't say I've had enough of them because I'm getting other people wanting. Well, Porsches. that's why I wanted to do this because you said I could pick 18 of my favorite things with wheels. With wheels. And I, exactly. And I picked things that were on my mind either from my past that had meaning to me or things I were thinking, you know, was thinking about that week. Yeah, the next one we'll do skateboards and, and other things. I could totally do it. Tonkas and It would start with a blue acrylic Sears uh, penny board, Sears and Roebuck penny yes. board. That yes. was my first Yeah, skateboard. very, very yeah. cool. So uh, when, we, when were you born? What year were you born? 64. 64, yeah. okay, so you're one year older than me. So you can run this if you want. No, go ahead, senior, this is good. The old guy in this. Okay, uh, so the first one here, this right here, what okay. is that? That is RS? the 73 Porsche 911 RS. What does RS stand for? Rensport. Rensport. Yes. Rensport. So, but that car is special to me because it was owned um, by four friends. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld owned it. Uh, my friend Sam Cabilio, who found it for Jerry. Mm -hmm. I then owned it, bought it from Jerry, and then I sold it to my friend Paul Zuckerman, who's on the podcast. So and we so drew this car, and you don't even own it. Yeah, I ha It's our. It's a family car. Friend car. Friend car. Yeah. That I do drive every once in a while, but mm -hmm. I owned it by myself for 12 years. And then uh, Jerry owned it for, I think, maybe four or five years. I can't remember. I don't know how long Sam owned it. Maybe for a couple. But we've we've made a promise to each other. We'll keep that car in our little circle of friends. It'll Stays never, in the friends? Yeah, it'll yeah. never leave. So you can always, uh, you know, and they can hand it down to the next friend. It's tangerine. It's orange, oh, too. It's very that's, desirable. That's good to know. Sunroof. So when you guys color this, uh, yeah, it's yeah. important to think about that. You know, yeah, yeah. Tangerine Straight. as a possibility. Mm -hmm. Next up, 1973 Ferrari 246 GTS Dino. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, that's sweet. That's another car. Uh, that is uh, a car I've always loved. Only in Malibu. I know. I, I saw it. I didn't know if it was on camera, but I saw. <laughs> I just saw a grown man's buttocks right yeah. over your shoulder. There's right there. there's a plus. I'm glad. I'm, I appreciate the visual. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't see it. But... I, when I was looking here. I was making sure you, but you blocked that's, it. That's a test of focus too, isn't it? I mean, you know, I was trying to be very professional. I've done live TV before and I would have to comment on it if it had happened. Now we are talking about it. It's a uh, two moon junction or it's a uh, Ferrari Dino. I like Dinos. This yeah. is just one of my favorite cars. Mm -hmm. uh, the one I owned was Fly Yellow back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, I Coincidentally, I bought it on the same day as I bought that RS. Ah. Uh, this was the car I'd really been looking for. Right. And as I was closing this deal, Jerry called and said, I'm selling the RS. And I, I said, please don't, because I'm going to have to buy that too. You can't let it go. <laughs> he was going to let it go at uh, Barrett Jackson, yeah. uh, which yeah. I thought was completely wrong for that car. Yeah. And I told him, all right, send it over. I'll buy that car too. Is no, your... Back in the day when these things weren't all that expensive. Yeah, yeah. Right. 
Uh, is your um, love of cars an addiction? No, no. An addiction, by definition, I think, is something that has consequences. Dude, what are the consequences here? We're having a good time. We're yeah, that's right. That, yeah, consequences don't always books. have to be bad. Right. Yeah, they can always they can be good it too. It makes me happy. Yeah, that's right. Addictions don't I'm make me happy. I'm sitting in a yellow chair. I don't know about you guys, but this is pretty awesome. Uh, 1959 Porsche 356 Carrera by Zagato. Okay, that's our Zagato. Zuckerman and I own this kind of uh, one-off. Not one-off. There are nine of them in the world. Yeah. Uh, Zagato bodied 356 that was going to be built in 950, uh, 1959, mm -hmm. but they decided to to build it with Porsche in 2015. Mm -hmm. They were going through their uh, their designs and they were digitizing their collection at Zagato. They found the designs for this. Mm -hmm. They had forgotten about it. The color Porsche said, let's build it. Um, they offered us one of them and that's car number seven. That's my favorite car right now. I so love that what, what is it, I mean, Regarding Porsches, what is it the, the thing about it that you like the most? Is it the history? Is it the, the drive experience? What is it that you enjoy the most? Good question, Fireball. Mm -hmm. It's the drive. It's the driving. Most people don't understand that about me or about Porsche, and I didn't understand it about Porsche either. It's mm -hmm. just a simple, focused driving experience. Mm -hmm. um, and especially the early cars are like go-karts, and yeah. I used to love go-karts when I was a kid. Yeah. Nothing extra, no power steering, no power brakes. It's just, just a nice, about simple drive. Yeah, yeah, it's focused on you, and that's and what I really love. Where did you grow up? In Massachusetts, in a small town in Massachusetts, West Some Bridgewater. Easy to get away on small streets with uh, go-karts? Uh, we had a go-kart track. Ah. It was back in the day when the go-kart engine uh, would rip any girl's scalp off if they had ponytails. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, the good old yeah. days of go-karts. <laughs> yeah. The Briggs and Stratton yeah. days. You know, I did read an article that anyone born around our time should not be alive right now because we, we drank out of the hose. Yes, We I rode our do. bikes without helmets. Why can't you drink out of the hose? Oh, because it'll kill you now. Really? Oh, it'll kill you. Yeah, dead as a doornail. Well, here I am. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> That, you know, a couple other things, but just to indicate that... I used to ride my dirt bike on the sidewalk. Without a helmet. Of course. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if helmets were invented. No. At the time, yeah. Yeah, my kids don't understand. Yeah, we were we were riding around in wooden underwear. and uh, Wooden underwear? Yeah, dinosaurs and... That's great. And stuff, yeah. Speak so so you, you mentioned, you know, we talked about cars. I expected a car book, but lo and behold, he insisted on having a bike. He tried to here. talk me out of it. Yeah, I had never heard of this. The Combat 1970 Hodaka Combat Wombat. What yeah, a name. Yeah, Japanese bike. You got to keep that? What? You to keep that? There you go. What do I got? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. A little bubble? <laughs> That's little the beauty fuzzy. of live. We get fuzzies. Yeah. So this is a Combat Wombat 73. What is it this about that This made me bike? so happy. This is why I did the coloring book. It's yeah. because I'd never seen a combat wombat in a coloring book ever. <laughs> I don't, I've and, never seen a combat wombat. When you wombat agreed theory. to do it, yeah. I said, "This is going to be a worthwhile project. Yeah. Like if uh, my kids will color this, yeah. you know, think of all the things you have to color. You won't ever find another coloring book that has a combat right. wombat in it. Yeah. And this was a bike that my uncle stored in my garage and gave to me when I was twelve. And he, he told me, I'm not going to tell your dad. Yeah. It's yours, but I'm not telling your dad I gave it to you. Enjoy it. So whenever my mom and dad were at work, I would get that thing and I would haul ass and take off on yeah. city streets. Yeah. The police would grab me and bring me back. And Talk see, about you freedom. License. It yeah. was great. Your Uncle Tim. Yeah, Uncle Tim, right. Yeah. I love that bike. I, I would love to get another one of those. they really awful bikes. Yeah. <laughs> They're two strokes. You have mm -hmm. to mix, mix the oil and the gas and, mm -hmm. you know. In my house, where I grew up with a dad did not do anything, mm -hmm. the idea of mixing oil and gas, yeah. just like, I don't know, get some oil yeah. and gas. Yeah. <laughs> how does this, Put it in a cup how does this hammer it? work? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it was um, hard figuring that bike out. When you when you show, I mean, when when you told your kids you were doing a coloring book, what was their response? Uh, they mocked me, but yeah. that's their response to everything that yeah. I tell them. Yeah. I'm doing a movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doing a TV Is show. it going to be as good as? Yeah. Is it going to be on YouTube? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, what's the first thing they colored when they got the book? Uh, let's see. That's a good question. I think my son colored the Bugatti that's in there. He, okay. he loves the Chiron Pure Sport. Yeah. That was the one. The yeah. oldest, who's a, who's a, that, a that's pilot, ex, that's has not colored taste. anything. That's expensive taste. You're in trouble. Well, when they get a little older. For them, it's just you know. Imagine, you know, when we we were kids, what did we like? Corvettes. We liked the exotic stuff, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Now, look, these kids, they have these hyper cars that they see on YouTube. They go crazy when they see them, right? So I was like always yeah. going, why do you, you really you like Pagani's? You like yeah. 1.3 is a, is a cheap car. But they don't even know yeah. the value of them. They just think it looks cool and it's really fast, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fa faster than uh, they realize, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1961 Ferrari 250 short yeah. wheelbase competition coupe. Now, this is Bruce Myers' car. Who's a friend, the founder of the Peterson Auto Museum. Does Bruce know that this is in the book? Of course, he yeah. saw it. Okay. And this has been my 10 year campaign to liberate this car from Bruce <laughs> Meyer. <laughs> Good luck with Whenever that. Whenever they say, What is your favorite car? I go, Bruce Meyer 61. Whenever uh -huh. they say, What is the greatest car? I yeah. say, Bruce Meyer 61. What kind of car do you want to put in the color? Bruce Meyer is 61. So, so there's a plan there to <laughs> promote promote him until he gives you the car. He's getting on in years. Yeah, He's yeah. 130 now. Right, yeah, exactly. And uh, someday, I hope to, one, uh, be able to buy it, and two, uh, have the money to be able to buy it. Yeah, but I think he has the money for some kind of sustain sustainability <laughs> engine that no, allows please, him to please, live for a very please long Please do time. not give him any ideas. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he's going to watch this, but yeah, we don't want to plant Somehow that seed. Somehow Bruce hears about everything. He does. <laughs> God, that's an understatement. Uh, 2004 Porsche Carrera GT. I love these cars. Yeah, that's a beautiful car. And I've never owned one of these. I've driven a bunch, and I feel like these are uh, should be in every Porsche collection if you have the means. Yeah. They're seven or eight hundred thousand dollars. They're analog, but they look like something that's uh, you know you just get this analog racing experience. Yeah. They have a wooden shifter knob in them, mm -hmm. right? And they're very challenging to drive. The clutch is a little tricky, but it makes an incredible sound. It had an yeah. engine that was designed for Formula One racing, mm -hmm. and they scrapped the F1Zs, and they said, let's sell these to people. They're insane, and they're wonderful, and they're unique. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, if I'm I, not, that's something I'd want to get sooner than later. Yeah. I think I want I may. I'm not sure 100%, but I think my friend Jason Hill designed this car. Uh, Jason's done a lot of concepts over the years. I don't but think so. I think that was the boys at Porsche. I thought that was, uh, mm -hmm. and he may have been involved early on. I'm spacing on the guy's name, but um, I'll think of it. I'll yeah, think of it. yeah. He designed the Boxster as well. Got it. Uh, if you guys have a question for Spike, uh, post it. Anything that's interesting, and we'll uh, uh, even if you have a question that's not interesting, it's okay because he did do the B movie, and that I'm not talking about a B movie. The B movie. The B movie. Yes, right. I did it. Yeah, with some friends. And you've done it. You've written a couple other things that people might know. What are some things that Seinfeld? You, Seinfeld. Letterman. Mm -hmm. SNL. One or two episodes. Yeah. How many Seinfelds? Uh, ten. Wow, that's ten pretty good. But that's I worked good. on a bunch more. But the episode. The what do you episode mean? that that everyone the knows. Soup Nazi. The Soup Nazi. Yeah. It will be on my gravestone. Did you did you uh, model that on anyone? You. No, no. But I, I think that you modeled it on someone who's close by. Bill? No. <laughs> he thinks, but that's not true. It was okay. a guy in New York that, uh, that is the real super. You can't guy. write about a guy that's out here, even if he's no. from New York. Bill is one of many people in the world I heard about after who's referred to as the shoe store Nazi, the deli Nazi, yeah, the yeah. Philly cheesesteak Nazi. I think he's the actually the, the orange cone Nazi yes. because I got yelled at last weekend. He told me that. Yeah. Oh, he told you? He just yeah. told me again about it. Oh, okay. Does he know we're out here? Because he's probably going to come he out does. and yell at me for, for doing this. It's, you know, it's okay. feel blessed. It's like yeah. when a bird craps on you. It's good luck. Yeah, true. Bill has yelled at all. <laughs> It's part of his charm. Yeah, it is kind of one of those things. Um, <laughs> speaking of the Bugatti uh, Chiron Pure Sport, yeah, what, I love what that. year is this? Do you know what year that That's is? That's brand new. It's brand new. I just drove that car, mm -hmm. and I, when you called me about what to put in the uh, coloring book, I had just driven it, and I really loved it, and it was a unique driving experience. So I said, let's do that too. That, that's yeah. a cool, cool, super cool car. Uh, Steve Gelman says the GT was designed by the Porsche Racing Group. Obviously, some changes were done. The later decisions for street sales. Oh, what is this guy's name? It's gonna hurt me. Yeah, he's now he's he's got a bug up his butt. Uh, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. It's right there. I can I can almost uh, see it hanging out. We're having some coffee. We're here in Malibu. I don't I don't know if we're allowed to pe tell people. What's we're, that? We're in a top secret location. We get in trouble if we tell people we're in Malibu. No, of course not. Okay. What does that matter? Uh, pick up a latest copy of. Um, Grant Larson. Grant Larson. As I understand Latest it copy of Drive Magazine. Man. Oh, look, Pep. Pep and myself on the cover. There's some stuff in there about um, a sh something that happens in Malibu. I'm not allowed to say what it is. Otherwise, I will get a lawsuit eventually. Or at least maybe Bill will come You're out protected. and yell at me. That'd be good. Now, I'm pretty sure it's Grant Larson, but maybe I'm wrong. 
because in one of those cars, either the Boxster or the Carrera GT, there was uh, there were there was like a three or four day all nighter run where they just had to go at the clay again and redesign it right before it was yeah. announced. Yeah. I'm fairly certain it was that car. The, the process is pretty awesome. Boxster, uh, as a side note, I'm driving this Corvette right here. Right there. Very nice. That's what uh, what we're having for this this week. Taking that to Fountain Valley and to Muscles and Mojo on that's Sunday. That's not an Acura. That's it's pretty close. Although <laughs> my friend is cheap design for Acura, he would love that comment. You see, we're doing it. the show for four people right there. Yeah, that's okay though. That's all right. It's not a normal time for our live stuff. This is kind of a surprise, even though I mentioned it. Let's go it. live on my channel after this and see what happens. Yeah. I've never done one. I, honestly, I've never tried it. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, Do you think it's a some, fun uh, thing. you folks yeah. will come come on and we'll talk? Uh, I, for here, today? It's possible. On mine? On yours? Yes, probably. Are, they, are there really that many people? Unless they have, have jobs. Well, yours, most, most of you guys are like, like 11 and 12, right? So they don't have jobs, but they might be in school. Maybe. Yeah. No, mine are, they work. Yeah. They're old dudes like yeah. us. Yeah. So a lot of these guys, the guys that are watching right now, they don't have jobs. They're in between, right, guys? That's Gelman. Gelman. Yeah, I know Gelman. Uh, Steve McQueen's live. Steve McQueen's uh, Porsche 917. Oh, that's look at that car. Yeah, boy. That car is very special to me. I saw it uh, on La Cienega. Uh, in, a, in a car dealership back in the day, uh, I had Jerry go down and we, we looked at it for like two hours. Seinfeld ended up buying it. Oh. We were out the track with it with Ferrari as the dealer was trying to sell them the car. And we watched the front wheel fall off the car and then the whole front end get... <laughs> We've had so Pancakes. much fun with that car yep. and it's such a beautiful thing. And, you know, it's really everything you could want and could imagine when you... When you watch McQueen in Le Mans, yeah. and then you see this car at Willow at speed and hear the sounds, oh, yeah. it's mind blowing. Did they, the, you saw a THX 1138, remember that? Yeah. Did yeah. that have a Porsche in it? I don't recall. With the, there was only two cars at the end that they were escaping in, but right, I, I couldn't right. remember. I just remember that car, which I've yeah. driven too, yeah. is, that's it. Is, there, is that's, there any car that you've had that you let go that you wish you hadn't? Um, many, yeah, many, but I'm, but I'm, I, I've made peace with all that stuff. I, I like looking forward and having new experiences in cars. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, it, my, a couple of good friends of mine have been asking me what's next, and I, I'm like, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm really happy with what I drive, with what I'm driving. I've driven a lot, and I'm mm -hmm. not really dying to get anything. Mm -hmm. That said, something yeah. like this. Yep. I've never owned uh, 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 an historic race car. Well, I have, I guess I had eight ball for a while. Mm -hmm. um, but something like that would be really cool. But something that you can still drive on the street? I don't know. Yeah. I'm gonna put more thought into it. I'm really looking forward to the new GT3. Mm -hmm. um, and then whatever else Porsche is making. Yeah, yeah, always. But I get busy and then I, I stop thinking about cars. Yeah, what, what are you working on right now that you are not allowed to talk about? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> but something cool. Give, give us a hint. Is there bees in it? No. B2? Not. B squared? No, I get asked that a lot. I really want to do B, B movie too, uh -huh. um, but I don't think it's going to happen yet. Mm. I, it's, it would take me a lot of work to figure out, but. What the, what the hell do the you world do with really bees next? Yeah. Well, I have an idea. Oh. Yeah. It all has to do with Jeff Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Just let's, because. Let's see if Jeff Bezos blows himself up in his spaceship next month. And uh, you know, I'm going to be watching because that would make great TV. Yeah. Which billionaire will blow themselves up first? Up, sideways, yeah. down. It's yeah. going to be special. Yeah. Uh, 1958 Porsche 356 Speedsters. Speedster. We love Speedsters. At the studio, no less. Um, if you guys we have been to Warner Brothers, you've seen the water tower, and that's what happens at nighttime when everyone goes home. It crawls around and does yeah, yeah. what it needs to do. That is a great car. We just, we, we, in my little group, we think this is the ultimate collectible vintage Porsche. Mm -hmm. The 356 Speedster. Looks great, fun yeah. to drive. You can drive it in any weather condition. Just pull up the top. Mm -hmm. It's warm, you know, when it's cold out, the heat works great. <laughs> it's just a great all around thing. Fantastic. Uh, badasses only. Did you see this? Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah. This is Jerry's, Jerry's spot right here. That's where Jerry parks. And this is uh, Spike Spot, Badass' own. That's funny. Yeah. He used to have two of them on the, back when we were shooting Seinfeld. Uh -huh. We used to go in. And where did you guys shoot that? Orange? CBS Radford. Oh, okay. In yeah. Studio City. Yeah. And then I remember a guy with a forklift backed right into the front of one of his guys. Nice. While he was beeping behind him going, no! <laughs> Screaming. Yeah. 
Good times. Good times. Uh, 1979 uh, Volkswagen Polize Beetle. That's this a cool is what's coming to the live. Yeah. Um, the live. Yeah, we're going to be live at that there. Yeah, the yeah. book signing. Book signing. Um, uh, June 26th, Saturday at 11 a.m. This car. That is a fun car. Happy car. PA work, sirens work. Mm -hmm. uh, former Seinfeld car. Yeah. Probably the most famous police beetle. It was uh, on Car Matchmaker. It uh -huh. was on Jerry's Comedians of Cars Getting Coffee with Bill Maher. Jay's had it on, on his show. What kind of looks do you get from uh, people when you drive that thing around? Yeah, fun, laughs, smiles. Yeah. Yeah. People really like it. Yeah, it's a happy it's a happy little car. And it's, it's a, just a Mexican uh, Volkswagen Beetle. Why this? I mean, you, you got Porsches, you do a lot of the exotics that you like. Why? At the time when uh, it was offered to me, my kids were little. So uh, what what better thing to have to drive around to birthday parties in and stuff? We, we've had a lot you, of fun. Did you ever here. threaten them with it? Like you will not get to drive in this. No, you don't calm down, kind of. No, thing. no, no. no. Yeah. They have other things more important to them to take away from them. Two kids? Yeah. And how old are they? Thirteen, eleven. Oh, borderline. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. yeah. Uh, boy, girl. Boys. 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 Yeah. All right. They make heirs. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the spike maze. Um, attempt what is this the spike at home. maze. Yeah. So the whole point of the spike maze is uh, if you Xerox this and uh, put two or three people together and they all race to see how fast, how fast ah. they can get through it. Oh, that's cool. Right? I think the top number is like two minutes seventeen seconds. Really? To get there's, through it. Yeah. Wow. You think you're smart, but there's some tricks in there okay. that uh, will leave you shame. My kids will actually like that. We'll try yeah. that. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Xerox it out, and, and then the three or four of you can Got it. go to town. Uh, 1974 Porsche 911 IROC RSR. What? No, IROC. Now I I grew up with with the Chevys and everything else. Right. And, and IROC was a was a Camaro. It wasn't this. Right. So what is IROC? Is IROC that the same? is the International Race of Champions. That's ah. what IROC stands for. Okay. And in '74, they were racing different colored uh, 911 RSRs, mm -hmm. of which this one, the yellow car, is a car that Seinfeld bought. It was actually offered to me. He passed on it. It was offered to me, and then I stupidly passed on it, and then he bought it. Mm. I, I, I had a moment where I could have owned the car for not a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and Jerry, you know, did the work and got it running. And uh, does I he often pull the rug out like that to you? No, it's one of the few times. Usually, you know, we call it the crumbs. We get the Seinfeld crumbs. <laughs> what it falls off his muffin, we get, we get. Yeah. And yeah. Sam called me up and said, Jerry isn't going to buy this. I think you should. And he yeah. was right. I really should have bought that car. Um, but I just love, I drove it on the street. It's street legal. And boy, it's it, to me, it's the ultimate, like, uh, 911. The ultimate, ultimate 911. The steering is so direct. The... Uh, so easy for anybody to take on a racetrack and yeah. just drive it, yeah. and it makes a glorious '70s 911 sound. Uh, now you know my my dad's been a writer in Hollywood for for uh, uh, more years than I think Hollywood's been around. Mm -hmm. But his his um, tip of the day for as a writer is uh, put your butt in the chair. So uh, for those of, that are out there that want to write, want to be in Hollywood, making their way, what's something tip you could get for being a Hollywood writer? A Hollywood writer. Mm -hmm. Mm. It could be a Westwood rider or a Kansas City rider if you want, but uh, um, it's never been easier. It's never been easier to, to be write one. your stuff, put it on YouTube, yep. get an audience. Yeah, there's yeah. a pathway now. Yeah, there uh, really is. It's interesting. A lot of people uh, don't take steps because they're not sure. It's like you got to take the steps you can. Yeah, you and just then keep you, trying. Yeah, you try. You show your stuff. If mm -hmm. you like a show, if there's a television show that you like, mm -hmm. you watch it and maybe write a script and submit it yeah, to them. Yeah. You know, really, you know, I've sold two like, screenplays. Well, there you go. <laughs> That's great. That's um, hard. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard, but it, it kind of doesn't happen when you expect it to. It just kind of out of the blue starts to It does, to yeah. You never know what uh, you've written, whether it's going to be the thing that pops. That's yeah, for sure. Exactly. Things exactly. just happen. Yeah, because there's, there's about 10,000 things that can happen in between the initial concept to a filming uh, that can blow up a a concept you know yeah. and destroy it you know there are and now it's about kind of putting together packages of making things work so mm -hmm. it's not just the idea you need sequels and prequels and and side stories no the whole and, crew okay if i were going to be you know putting a movie together you know i'd be putting everybody together mm -hmm. here's the script it's done mm -hmm. here's the director here's the production entity yeah. here's maybe one or so two they don't have to do anything casting. other than write you a check yeah, so it's yeah, ready to go. Yeah, it's ready to go. Yeah, that's where most of the business is yeah. right now. 
Uh, 19, from what I can see. Right. Uh, 1962 DB4 Aston Martin yeah. GT Zagato. Yeah. Incredible car. That's just another beautiful thing. I, 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 There's a guy in Beverly Hills that has one. I don't know who he is, but I've seen it getting loaded onto a truck a couple mm -hmm. of times. 10 or $15 million thing. It's just beautiful to look at. Yeah. An amazing car. Out of reach for all of us, but still. What, what's your unicorn car? Bruce Myers. Oh, damn. 19, I, should have, I should have seen that coming. <laughs> We only spent about 15 minutes talking about that car. So, Bruce, if Bruce you're watching, yeah, uh, Spike's coming to get your car. Not, I'm not sure what time, but eventually he's going to get there. Uh, 71 Land Rover Series 2A. Why this? Uh, well, I'm from New England, yeah. and I'm a fisherman, and I fish freshwater and saltwater on the East Coast. Yeah. And on the saltwater, on Cape Cod, you I would see these things like, racing down the sand in, four, in their 4x4 four four mode, chasing bluefish boils. Uh-huh. Uh, with the rod holders right there in the front ah, and uh, cool. I've always wanted one so when I came to LA I got one I don't get to fish out here really but there are no fish here yeah yeah I mean it's Bill might have some I, fish inside yeah, here but. Yeah, but not the type of fishing I like so that's uh, we have a little Massachusetts sticker on the back that's our little Massachusetts truck ah for driving around do you, do you fish time. off off a pier or go out no. on a boat on the east coast we would do we would chase boils either on boats or on the beach we're but on the west coast I don't know what a boil is What's a, what's a boil? Well, uh, in the spring and in the fall, the bluefish and the striped bass are, are chasing down and circle these smaller fish, and then ah. they come cut through and they boil like that. Ah, so you that's what either that race is. your boat there and yeah. cast in. You can't. You'll catch it like. 20 fish in two seconds. That's what the dolphin or, do, right? Or you get in your Land Rover and you ride down the beach and look for the boils at dusk. Holy and crap, fish them like wow. that. That's cool. And that's bluefish and striped bass. Learn something new. I'm yeah, not a fisherman. But fun, but that's you get the truck element, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. just, you know, It's a good excuse to get the truck whether you go it's boiling it or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you're drinking beer and you yeah. got a tent and you're hanging out. Yeah, right. Uh, we did something in this book that we've never done in a previous books. Uh, we've done 44 books now and we never had a crossword puzzle. But it seemed to make sense. Uh, I think crosswords are more an East Coast thing than a West Coast thing. Maybe they're smarter out there. I don't know. I think because everybody likes crosswords. No, they don't because it drives me up the wall. Because I, can't, well, I, don't get like the, I can't get the first one. What are they doing in our book? <laughs> I don't know what happened. Uh, this was done by Eric Dick, uh, amazing crossword, and uh, has all kinds he's of information. He's great. He's super fun. He's going to be out there on the pier with us on the 26th. He let me know. He seemed worried that he was going to overshadow me. Yeah, he's got, a little, he's got a little anxiety. But my guess is I will just be signing his books, and he'll be signing my books. Yeah. I'm, well, I'm, I tell you, I'm paying him uh, ten grand just to put in all the answers really? for me. Really? Yeah, because wow. I, because I'm not doing it. Forget That's it. That's more money than we've made on the coloring books. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know? You haven't gotten a payment yet. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, by far, this is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is great. Uh, I was unexpected, and I was I really enjoyed doing this. this is a Schwinn orange crate. Uh, it makes Look me want to do a book that's all Schwinns. Yeah, that's another cover. very special bike to me. That's yeah. the bike I had when I was a kid. Again, another gift from my uncle. And you know what? I, it turns out that not many people actually had this one. No. This was the unicorn back then for Yeah, yeah, for yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. I would have kept it, but it turns out to be a very rare thing. Yeah. That's my one regret. So you, I did you not blew that one too. Bike. Yeah, I let it. Well, I went off to college, and then yeah. my mom says we threw it in a dumpster. Right, and, and what was, college student's going to ride this? He you know? then threw out my stamp collection too, oh. which is a real bummer, because uh -huh. there was some good, but very valuable. What else did you collect as a kid? Uh, Honus Wagner baseball cards, no. Mm. That was it. I, I, you know, it was a weird stuff. I was, I was a, a bird kid for a while. I liked bird watching. I, uh, a stamp collector because I found a bunch of stamps in the attic of the house we bought. Mm -hmm. You know, that was super fun. Were you into coins? Were you a no. numismatist? But, but my parents bought this house that we lived in our whole lives and it had uh, a, a garage with an attic and in the attic was all of the old folk stuff I guess the yeah. two people died Ooh. and they didn't move their stuff out <laughs> so, so there was this yeah. chest and you know you'd have to meet my parents to understand that they never even inspected the house they never even went up into the top of the garage and mm. it was like a movie set you go to the top of the stairs yeah. and there was this locked chest and there was old furniture and there was suitcases it's like all clothes. treasures and pictures and it was all yeah. so as a kid you're like I think we moved in when I was seven or eight mm -hmm. it was a fascinating place and this trunk sat there for five years before I went I gotta open it <laughs> and I opened it up and there was a stamp collection wow. in there wow. old stamps from the early 1900s mm -hmm. 
my mom threw it away. Yeah, uh, I know. I know someone who had found a an old uh, safe, small small safe in, the, mm -hmm. in their house, a family member's house. Right. Looked inside, nothing in it, and they didn't want to keep it, so they put it for sale at a garage sale. And as they were cleaning things up, they opened it up and cleaned it out. But in the very back, they found about thirty or forty Krugerrands. Really? They were sitting in there. Wow. Uh, hiding. So you never know. Check check inside your shoes. Al what else Capone's is a good place? safe. That yeah. would have been a better ending to what they did with Al Capone's safe. Yeah, that that was uh, probably the greatest disappointment in television history, yes. I would think. Your story's way better. <laughs> 58 Mercedes-Benz 300 SL. Beautiful. Convertible. Yeah. Gold standard uh, car yeah. for car collecting. Zuckerman has one. Just a beautiful thing. We yeah. love those. Fantastic. They're great. Now, I, don't, I never see those guys, Lieberman or Zuckerman, come out to the Mel of the show. They both been here. Do they? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A lot. All right. I remember you doing Zuckerman your show doesn't here. like people, so <laughs> that holds him back. I wouldn't really guess credible. that. Lieberman <laughs> is, uh, he's got young, a young boy that I think he has to take care of. Uh, but he's been out okay. here. He'll yeah. come out. Okay. All right. Uh, 2011 Porsche GT3, four liter. Uh, yeah, that give is, me a color scheme. This we did so that you guys can see what the car looks like in that's multiple another colors. One. If you want to pick great 911s, here's another one. Yeah. The 4.0, the GT3 4.0, the ultimate GT3. Yeah. Manual gearbox, amazing sound, amazing really balance. Nice. It's, yeah. it's an incredible thing. Very expensive though, but worth it. You get the uh, okay, now we get into the really good stuff. I mean, I like the Porsches, I yeah. like the Ferraris. Uh, they're okay. They're okay. But uh, a 1963 Mercury Cougar XR7, yes. is. Um, there's got to be some story behind this. When I first moved to L.A., that's the car I bought. Mm -hmm. I had, uh, I think I had $2,000 to buy some wheels, and mm -hmm. I got a Cougar XR7 convertible, not the coupe there. Mm -hmm. um, Did anything happen in the back seat of this car? No. I don't need details, but... No, no. Nothing. Nothing, Nothing really. But the convertible top did not have... Uh, canvas on it, <laughs> I didn't care. <laughs> I mean, I was moving from New York, I'd been living in apartments, and I had a convertible, and I would take this car and just run it up and down Sunset to the beach and back, and yeah. sometimes smoke cigars in it. I was so happy. That I car's got it. some mojo. It's yeah, yeah, but for me, it was just about, like, that quintessential, like, American mm -hmm. convertible, yeah. you know, this beach image that I had seen on TV my whole life, yeah. you know, when yeah. you see, because we're in cold Massachusetts, and you see these guys driving in convertibles on the Pacific yeah. Coast Highway, you're yeah. like, I want to be that yeah. guy. I so when did you come out here? Um, in the in the 90s, okay. 1995. Mm -hmm. And you came from Massachusetts or no, New from York? New York. Directly been, to out I've to... I've been in New York for nine or ten years, yeah. and then right out here. And, and you're in, you live in Brentwood? I lived in Hollywood. Hollywood. Okay. I, had, I lived at the foot of Runyon Canyon there yeah. for, for yeah. many years. Yeah. But Hollywood was different back then. It was uh, empty. Yeah. You guys had just had that earthquake. Yeah, so nice. Yeah. It was an empty city. It what? was nice. Uh, so earthquakes are definitely a, a West Coast thing. Uh, something to be afraid of. But you can't really be afraid of them because you don't know when they're going to hit. So right. you, you could be alive one second and, you know, mush the next. Correct. That's close. So, so what What on the on the East Coast makes you nervous? What's that? What on the East Coast is, makes me nervous? Yeah, like you don't have tornadoes. No. There's no tsunamis. What? What's Natural over? disasters? Yeah. Anything? No, nothing. No, it's the people. Just There's the a level of brutality in Boston <laughs> and Massachusetts in general that gets directed at people like me occasionally. You just get yelled at for no reason. It just kind of... I'm just saying if you're small, petite in stature like I might be, and I'm 5'10", but yeah. I'm not... Yeah. And as you can tell, maybe a little smarter than some of the folks there. I don't know. Quicker. 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 And if yeah. you get a wise, if you're wise at, you can yeah. get beat up a lot. Yeah. You get beat up a lot. <laughs> All right? If you're Irish like Makes I you am man. and you're in the Italian <laughs> neighborhood by mistake, you're going to get beat up. Yeah. Right. Right. So there's a level of uh, anxiety that I have in Massachusetts that yeah. at any yeah. moment I might get punched again. Is that, do you feel that out here? No. There's no, there's no chance that you might get yelled at a little bit, but. Uh, yeah. No, here it's guns. Here you worry yeah. if you you do something wrong on the road, you'll just get shot by yeah. somebody in your yeah. car. You, you learn to keep your mouth shut. Yeah. yeah. I was driving over Dodger Stadium last night and I was waiting. A guy cut off by mistake and he yeah. came right up next to me and I went, here we go. Here we go. But yeah. I have, haven't you had a gun leveled at you occasionally out oh, here? Uh, yeah. Three yeah. times yeah. for yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, I mean, I live right off PCH and, and I see accidents mm -hmm. all the time. All the time. A lot of terrible stuff. But as a side note, if you are watching this, it's important to to drop this. Hopefully no one's crashing into my car. Um, if you come out here to the Malibu show, you want to have a good time. Yes. Uh, have a good time, but don't don't drive like a moron. 
I'll try if I can yeah. do it because uh, stay to the right. Yeah, is that Don't uh, make noise. at the lowest level you might get a ticket, you know, simple something like that. But at the highest level you might do some something you'll you'll regret. Just have a good time. Go, right. You can go up in the canyons, have some fun. But uh, on PCH, keep it cool. Uh, 1978 Honda Accord. Of all the cars I thought that were going to go in the book that I was hoping for, it was a 78 Honda that was Accord. my mom's car. I love that car. <laughs> but that, you know, after Look, my brother and I... See the Samurai? I mean, yeah. this car's badass. That's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. And maybe racist? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Questionable. Questionable content. <laughs> um, that car, after my the car that my... my brother and I had we smashed it yeah we had to drive my mom's car and that had a five-speed manual gearbox mm -hmm. in it and, I, and we and it for us it was a race car we loved it yeah. we thought it was the coolest thing that was had ever been made amazing so. uh, Steve Myers asks any Letterman stories uh, so many Steve so yeah. many yeah give, give us one <laughs> Did you guys end up in the pokey for some reason? Or? Dave and I in jail? No. Yeah. But Dave is the guy who ended, uh, who told me I was a Porsche guy and uh, let me drive his cars out here early on and really shaped um, my collection and what, I, what I'm attracted to. Yeah. And not because I was jealous of what he had, but more because I liked the driving experience of the things that he drove. Yeah. With the yeah. exception of Austin Healey's, which I'm now starting to like. Yeah. You know, again, those cars were never really valuable back then, yeah. right? Yeah. I was buying low mileage 911s in, you know, maybe 10 or 11 grand, mm -hmm. you know, and he, he, nobody wants it because it's white. You yeah. Know, like, it's got 4,000 miles on yeah. it. Yeah. It's brand new. Right. right. It's white. Nobody wants it. And I'm like, okay. I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take yeah. it. we got a Conda green. It's a weird It's like green. collecting Hot Wheels because yeah. Yeah, they're not that much. Yeah. Yeah. So there was a lot of great stuff out there. Now it's insanity. And just so you guys know, no, we're not going to leave you hanging. The uh, answers to the book, I'm not going to show it for that long so you yeah. don't take a picture of it. Uh, the answers for the crossword puzzle. Um, uh, with back to any stories with Letterman, anything that um, uh, did you ever almost get fired for any reason? I would bet if I asked them that they would say, <laughs> "Yeah, a lot." <laughs> but Every did it ever day, make man. it? Did it ever make it to me? <laughs> no, I worked there for five years, and I. Certainly pushed the boundaries of decency on that staff, yeah. but yeah. I always tried to be inspired with my lunacy. So I yeah, but what you know, I mean, since there wasn't skits like there is a lot now with with Fallon Show and a lot of those things, you know, no, what we did, you... did we did viewer mail? Okay, okay, we did a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, um, our writing day it was a very busy day. We did monologue uh, jokes in the morning. Mm -hmm. We did uh, uh, top 10 subjects after that, and then we had to write a page of top 10 list jokes, and then we'd start working on the next day's show. So yeah. the afternoon was spent writing act ones and act fives. Act yeah. ones being a certain kind of comedy, and act fives being the fatter kind of maybe street remote stuff. I, I would imagine that comedy writing must be more difficult than writing drama or you know uh, slashing people up and no. stuff. It, it just seems... Letterman is a very specific thing, yeah. whereas uh, Rob Burnett described it really well. He said, if all of comedy is a football field, uh, Letterman is one square inch that you mine straight down to China. And I found that to be really accurate uh, because we're doing five nights a week. So when, when uh, something happens with a president, you're really hitting that joke all day long yeah. for about three or four weeks. Right. The news site's a little faster now, yeah. so stuff, but I yeah. can imagine the same thing happened with this last president we had. Yeah. Yeah. Where you're just, you know, how many of the same jokes can I keep writing? <laughs> <laughs> like, it, get, it burns you out, yeah. but it's, yeah. uh, you know, again, it's a great job, you know. Yeah. You write something that then will resonate. And, and how, do you, how do you know it's funny? You don't. You know. I mean, a show like, on a show like that, Dave's picking the jokes. Yeah. So if he finds it's funny, you, it's successful. Yeah. Maybe okay. people will write about it, but it's yeah. really about Dave. Uh, it's in the delivery happy. too, though, isn't it? It's it's all about keeping that host happy. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it worked or didn't work. If he loved it, mm -hmm. that's your job. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Sure. And then if you have a little more freedom to aim something yeah. out yeah. without the host being involved, yeah. then yeah. it becomes about your audience and something you want to say. Right. I think. Right. But usually it's about pleasing that guy. Yeah, yeah. Other than uh, uh, book two that's going to be full of Schwins, um, what do you Everybody see? Everybody wants you to do the Zuckerman coloring book. <laughs> <laughs> we'll discuss that because I, that could be interesting. It could be interesting. Uh, We're going to do a live feed in a minute on my 
on my We're going to go through channel. all this again? And we're going to go through some of it again. This okay. time I'm going to host it. Okay. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and we're going to talk about the Zuckerman coloring book. Great, great. That's the uh, first question I'm going to have for you. <laughs> I think we better move on then. Uh, the book's available on Amazon. Uh, we're going to get some signed copies from Spike available on yeah, our yeah, Etsy store. Uh, and if you guys are in Malibu or near Malibu and you want to come out, you want to meet Spike, hang out for a bit. We're going to be on the Malibu Pier. Uh, a week from Saturday. A week from Saturday, June 10 o'clock, 26, right? 11. 11, okay, 11 good, I'll be there. You can get there at 10 if you want. Actually, you got to get there at 9 because we got to bring the cars on the pier. It's going to take two hours to drive a car that's on the pier? That's what they told me. You can, you can argue with the ladies. Right. Yeah. See you at 11. But, uh, uh, that's it. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, if you want to watch more, we're going to go over to Spike's channel and, and see what happens. Okay.